briefly about why we like herbs so much. Um, when we first started growing food, we kind of we kind of decided and dedicated that, okay, we were only going to eat stuff that came out of our garden. Like once stuff started coming out, we had enough, we were only going to eat that and rice, beans, and meat. So that was kind of, that was what our, our template, like kind of what we had to work with, right? And when we first started, it was awesome because it was like, oh, we're making our own food. And then like three weeks into it, I was like, I cannot handle another side of squash. <laughs> that was where we were when we started like taking these things serious. So that's kind of the frame of mind that we came into this with was how can we make this stuff taste different? And so we started trying to grow things to add more variety into our meals. So, so we started, um, you know, I, I'd, always, I'd always use stuff like this, like cooking, but it was always the, like the McCormick or whatever, you know, and that's all I'd ever known. So I didn't appreciate the value of it um, until we started so another kind of rule we had back then was we could eat anything that we grew ourselves or we could buy something that we could grow. So that was kind of how we branched out our garden was we would go to the, you know, anything that could be grown, we would buy it first if we liked it and then try and grow it. So, so we started buying fresh herbs and we started buying basil at the store and it was like, you know, it's $5 for like a couple basil leaves it seems like. And, and, and so the, this is kind of where we were like thinking, you know, like, okay, well, let's try and start and grow this stuff instead. So I think basil was probably one of the first things we started with. We'll go ahead and start there and, and talking about this stuff because it was around the summer and basil is really easy to grow. Um, I already knew to use that and like, I had already been using it fresh in recipes for a while. I was already comfortable using it. So that was a good one for us to start with. And it's really easy to start from seed. Like you can take, you know, basil seeds, put them in the, in the ground and you're gonna have basil pretty, you know, pretty quickly. Now, the one thing we do with basil is we, uh, at the very beginning of the season, we'll start a lot of seeds, um, but then we'll also buy like maybe four or five basil transplants as well, so that we get a jump on the season with basil. We don't have to wait for that to produce. So that's typically what we're doing um, with basil. Again, it's really easy to grow. Kara, you wanna talk about how we like to use it in the kitchen and all that? Yeah. So my favorite variety of basil is the cinnamon basil. Um, if you guys haven't tried that before, it's so good and it's great to add in. My favorite thing to do with that is to chop up some carrots and sweet potatoes and saute those with some cinnamon basil. It is amazing. It gives it a little bit of a cinnamon flavor, almost sweet. So it's, it's my favorite. And then you make a lot of pesto from yes. basil also. Yeah, we do a lot of pesto with these herbs. So. And if you never made pesto, it's really easy. Yeah, it's just pine nuts, Parmesan cheese, some olive oil, and then the herb. <laughs> well, so much for the mic. <laughs> and then the herb. And, and garlic. Then, and garlic, yeah. yes. So, And then you just mix it all together. And with this, you can either keep it in the refrigerator for a couple days and eat on it, and or you can put it in the freezer and store it for long term. But it never makes it to our freezer in our house. We always just, it's always gone long before then. And you can make pesto out of pretty much any of the herbs we're talking about. So that basic recipe we just mentioned applies across the board, whether it's basil, sage pesto is probably sage our is favorite great. pesto. Yes. Uh, I've heard cilantro pesto is good. I just don't want to sacrifice that many cilantro leaves typically because <laughs> it's, pretty, it's a pretty scarce resource. Um, okay, so, so that's basil. Any questions about basil before we move on? We to... use basil a lot as companion plant too for yes, like that's tomatoes a great thing to mention. Yeah. and peppers, things like that. Yeah, tomatoes love basil. It makes tomatoes taste better. <laughs> um, yes, question? So do you basil and keep like year round? You can do that. Um, we don't really take basil through. Now we do preserve basil for the winter. And the way we do that is we take basil cubes and chop them up really small, put them inside of ice cube trays and then fill those ice cube trays with olive oil and put them in the freezer. And then it makes these frozen blocks of olive oil infused, you know, and, and then when we're doing like a sauce, we'll use that as the base. So that's how we're using basil in, in, in the winter. You can bring it in and have it under grow lights and all that. We're just, we're not really doing that. I'm switching to, so the way I think about herbs, I'm trying to use what's in season. So there's a lot of herbs we can have in the winter that do fine. Like, like every, pretty much everything you see here um, came from our garden has been sitting on the back porch. So like this oregano and rosemary, and there's a plant called winter savory that we'll talk about in a little bit, but it's around the other side. You know, it does great in the winter too. So we're switching to these other herbs in the winter and then eating a lot of basil in the summer whenever it's fresh and, 
I mean, once you have like fresh basil out of the garden, it's so hard to go back to, even the stuff that's grown indoors doesn't have the same, you know, and plus like when we're growing it outside, like I'm so accustomed to harvesting like this much at a time that I can't go back to like, oh, this cute little bit, you know what I mean? I just like, I've been spoiled, so. <laughs> So it's kind of, they kind of go together. It's interesting. So companion planting the gardening idea is this. There are plants that grow well next to each other and help each other. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that pests find what they're looking for through their sense of smell. So if you have a tomato plant and you surround it with basil, then that plant is going to, uh, is going to find, is, is that, it's going to be a whole lot harder for the pest to find that plant, right? Because the, the plant is finding, what, finding it through its sense of smell. So that's the idea of companion planting at a planting level. Um, now you will find a lot of these uh, companion plants that are kind of known things that go really well together are often paired together food-wise too. Look at tomato and basil. Um, so you will find some correlation there, which I think is interesting. I think that's just a convenience of they've been grown together for so long, naturally you're gonna pair them together in foods together. Yeah, basil so, with a tomato sauce is really good. So as he, as he was talking about those olive oil cubes, we use those a lot whenever we start a, a tomato sauce. How do you prevent from getting freezer burn? It can only happen if so Well, it's infused yeah. in the oil, so that's encapsulating. We only keep them in the cubes for 24 hours, and then we transfer them from the cubes over to a, a zipper safe. So yeah. then they're, they're in there for long-term storage. So. Now, I, I want to talk about kind of where these herbs come from, because that's kind of important with how you think about growing these. So basil, oregano, rosemary, all these places, all these herbs, they come from the Mediterranean desert. So being that, they do not like having a lot of water staying at the base of the plant, because that's not what they're used to. So they grow really well in these smart pots. That's why you see a lot of our herbs in these smart pots. Um, if you're not familiar with this, it's, just, it's fabric. They're made here, they're made here in Oklahoma City. Um, they work really well. We've pretty much shifted everything in our backyard to using these to grow in. Um, there's, uh, on each plant in the app, if you look on the app, it'll show you um, the size of smart pot that goes with the plant. Um, so it'll help guide you on what size to go with. But we're pretty much growing all of our herbs in either a smart pot or as a companion next to another plant. So that's, that's our strategy with the stuff. Now I mentioned they come from the Mediterranean desert, so they like um, kind of, they, they can tolerate hot days and then cool nights because, you know, temperatures vary, but again, it's just, they can't have water at their feet all the time. So you only have to water these things, like the oregano, you know, like once every couple weeks is all you have to water it. So they have really deep root structures and, and they do really well here. Um, okay, so basil also is something that's really easy to start from, um, like if you have one basil plant, you can just cut a stem off of that plant and root it in, in soil and it'll make a new basil plant. Um, a lot of these herbs are that way. So let's move on to oregano next. We'll talk about it. Oregano is the same way. You can take one of these and just pinch it off, peel the bottom leaves off. They have this thing called rooting hormone that makes this process a little faster and, and more reliable. It's just this powder, it's like $3. And you dip the plant down in there and then you, and then you put it in the soil. And that just, there's a naturally occurring, uh, occurring hormone that tells plants to make roots. This is that hormone that it just kind of gives it a jump start. So I do recommend doing that. And, and now is when we're starting to do a lot of that. So um, as soon as this tray, where's our tray of microgreens? It's right back here. As soon as we get back home and eat this, um, we'll be switching this stuff out with starting to make more thyme plants, oregano plants, and all of that in our seed starting area. So now's the time to do that as well. Um, oregano, let's talk about oregano. So. Out of all the things that you can grow, oregano is one of the easiest. So um, it is, you're gonna have <laughs> She's a hard... saying no. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, really? Did you give it too much water? No. No? Uh, I think I gave it too much sun. When did you plant it? Do you remember what month you planted it? Uh, it was in a pond. Oh. Oh, well, so typically, I'm sorry, but typically oregano, um, now one thing I will say about oregano is if you plant it like too close to the summer, then it's not going to be able to handle the heat coming. So you've got to like get it in the ground before. So I mean, um, it sounds like you planted it at the right time. So it may have just been bad luck. I mean, maybe a cat was peeing on it. You can blame that, right? I don't know. But normally like oregano is, is pretty, is one of the things that's one of the easiest things to grow. Try, try it again. And there's three different types of oregano. Um, this is Italian, we have Italian oregano, which is like a mild oregano flavor. 
it's probably the one to start with, especially if you have kids. The traditional uh, oregano is the Greek oregano. It's like more of the intense flavor. And then there's a hot and spicy, and it's legit hot and spicy. So it's really good to add to like rice and beans. That's one of his favorites. Yeah, but the first time I <laughs> ate it, I grabbed like a whole handful and ate them all, and that was a mistake. So <laughs> don't do that. Um, what else do you want to say about oregano? I mean, obviously, it's really good in Italian dishes. I mean, we use it whenever we make like a homemade pizza. We use it a lot for our pasta sauce. Um, of course, any sort of pasta. Mashed potatoes. But, we yeah. use it on top of mashed potatoes. Yep. Um, we have this pretty cool herb grinder that you kind of you put stuffed leaves in into and you kind of twist it back and forth and it grinds the leaves out. We like to use that a lot. Makes it really easy. We've got a ninja too that helps with some of the stuff. Um, as far as like how you preserve some of this stuff, oregano is one of those things that dries really easy. So basil is not. Basil you can pretty much have to preserve through freezing, but uh, rosemary, oregano, and some of these like thyme, some of these more woody herbs dry easily. So we'll just harvest stems, hang them on our wall, like in our living room, literally just right there. It's like a, it looks like a decoration. Yes? Um, how many of each herb do you guys grow So you could get by with like one of each plant. So for oregano, one would be fine. Rosemary, I'd probably have like two or three because it's a little bit slower growing. But like I am a, like the same energy I put into collecting football cards goes into plants right now. I'm like an obsessive collector, so I'm always like, "Ooh, that's a rosemary I have," and I'm like, "Oh, I need to have another one in case." The, you know, I'm like I'm a hoarder, so like I'm probably not a good like baseline. This right here would be. I mean, this thing is yeah, just getting. There, this thing is going to have like so much. I mean, this thing's a baby right now. I mean, it's not a baby, but for the season it is, right? It's just getting going, so. Right. It's going to have so much coming from it that one oregano will be more than enough. Now, cilantro, you're going to need a big bed of it. Like, you know, here's cilantro right back here, and we'll get to that in a second. But it's kind of just different for each plant. We probably need to add that into the app as a feature of, like, how many you need for a person. Like, sort of calculator like that would definitely be helpful, I think. Any other questions before we move on to some other plants? Uh, oregano, I don't know if, I'm, know if I mentioned this, but it, like, out of all the things you can grow, it has some of the most health benefits per square sentiment, whatever you want to, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Do you and you cut it off do you do the numeral growth? Um, well, so. You take the whole, you go down and just take a stem? Yeah, so I'll just come and kind of come in like this, and then, yeah, and then I'll just like that, and now there's my, you know, I've got like a little stem in there, but there. And then you grind it up. Yeah, and I'm just like, while I'm watching TV in the kitchen, I'm just like doing this, and like, like you know, when I'm like fidgety, like I have anxiety, I go in the kitchen and do that. So, and like once a month will be more than enough to last us for a while. And those uh, smart pots, how much do they leach out? Like if you had it in here, like in a room? Yeah, they're gonna leak out for sure. Um, but what we have is we have uh, saucers underneath of them that collect that, and that helps us water them from below. So with these smart pots, you can actually, like in the summer, we'll have these out in the kiddie pool outside. So, and then we'll fill it with like two inches of water so it'll drink water from below. Now you want to be careful not to have too much water in there. You have mold issues and all sorts of issues. So we'll drill holes all around the kiddie pool a couple inches up. But, but that's a way that we keep peppers and tomatoes watered outside. And indoors, we're doing kind of the same thing, basically, where we have a big saucer underneath our, um, our smart pots. And then we're just, you know, we're watering that saucer. And then that way we're not watering the plants from above. The smart pot, that's Oh, no, our, I mean, these are, some of these are four or five years old. So, yeah. No, no, they're incredible, yeah. And in fact, they've lasted way longer than my raised beds. So my raised beds are made out of wood and they're starting to break down. And my smart pots are all going fine. Um, yeah, I think smart pot says that they last for like 10, 10 years. years they have or a 10 something. year, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've, I've seen some that are like 20, how old is that one that Bill has? Bill has one that's so old. So Bill Ferris at Prairie Wind Nursery has been using these down at his nursery in Norman for a long time for trees. That's how these got started. Those nurseries were selling trees and a lot of the trees they would sell would be root bound because they were in standard containers and then they would die, they'd have unhappy customers. So these smart pots, whenever the roots hit the side of the container, they don't circle around it like, like they do in standard containers. They just stop and they form a bunch of tiny little capillaries that continue to suck in oxygen. And also they, they have roots that grow down below. They continue growing through the fabric down into the ground and pull up. So, so the, they, they're able to do much better than standard containers. So that's how they got started. Um, was to be in nurseries where sometimes trees will sit for a very long time. And then they started branching out into, into this market. And, um, 
And when I first saw them, I was like, there's no way that thing's gonna work. Because the first time I tried growing in a container, it was horrible and like the plant died after a couple of months and I had swore off container gardening unless it was on a patio where I could watch it every day. But I experimented with these heavily. In fact, the first year I got a hundred gallon smart pot. I got two of them and the first one I buried. So it was in the ground. And the second one I put on top of the ground next to it. And the idea behind that was I thought that um, I thought it would dry out too much when it was up on top, right? And my biggest thing was I wanted a barrier where Bermuda couldn't get in. So I thought, oh, well, this would just kind of be a nice way of creating barriers. That's the way I thought about this product, right? Bermuda won't come through here? No, Bermuda wouldn't come through here no, to get in my plants. So and it'll come over top of it for sure, but it wouldn't come down below. So all I had to do was worry about the above, right? So that was kind of where I was when I first got these. And then what I found was that first year, the one that was buried didn't do near as well as the one that was up on top. So then that got my attention, I was like, okay, what's going on here? So I started like really diving into the science and all this kind of stuff. And what I learned was that whenever plants are planted in the ground or in the first scenario that I talked about where it was buried, they're only able to get air from standard methods like above ground, right? So if the plant is saturated with water, it can't get air, like, right? So plants that are in here are pulling in air from here and from the top. So it's almost like a car where if you infuse more air into the motor, it performs better, right? Well, it's the same idea with plants. So that was the basic idea of it. Um, and then ever since then, I've continued to experiment with these and I've just really become a big believer in them. So I'm not getting paid from them or anything. Uh, they gave us free stuff to give out, but they're not like, there's no money involved. I just believe in their products. So um, yeah, I, re I really believe in these things. And if I were starting over, I would do my whole garden with these. I wouldn't mess with building the wooden raised beds or any of that stuff. A big reason uh, for it too is portability. Like we're looking to, to buy another house potentially. And right now we're thinking like, what are we gonna do with all these raised beds and all this stuff. And if we just had all these, it'd be a lot easier. And, um, also, when hell storms come in, you can just bring these indoors. So that's a great thing too. Like these smart, like these rosemary and stuff, haven't had to put up with the, uh, like when it dips down to like zero, we'll pull it in. We'll leave it out most of the time, but when we get these crazy temperatures that go way down, we'll pull it in for that. So that's kind of the, any of the questions about smart pots or anything like that? That's kind of the spill. Yeah. So, so most of our smart pots right now are just kind of sitting out there empty. So um, ideally you would want to do like a cover crop that you get in before the end of the year, but I, we just didn't do that last year. We kind of almost took the year off in a way. So they're kind of, we were growing stuff. I, I wasn't doing cover crops and all that. So they're just kind of sitting there. You can empty them out and store them inside. They'll probably last longer if you do that. Um, but I have so many smart pots and I don't, it would be such be, it would be a huge undertaking to do that. Um, we are also, Typically what I'll do when I go to, small, uh, to plant a new one, so those ones that have been sitting there, I'm not just gonna go plant it like as is when I go to plant it. I'll take that smart pot, I, got a, I have a really big wagon, right? I'll dump it all into there, I'll add in a bucket of compost. Um, sounds crazy, but I'll, I'll do a smell test on it before I do any of that. And I'll kind of see if there's any life in the soil. And I promise, if you garden for a year, you're gonna get to the point where you can smell soil and tell how good it is. That's just how it works. So. I'll see how, how it seems, and if it needs some life, I'll put some compost in there, I'll put some worm castings in there, I'll, I'll kind of give it new life, and then I'll pour it back into the thing. So that's my process at the beginning of the year. Um, now I have some smart pots that, like especially the 100 gallons that are real wide, those have great soil already, I don't have to do anything. They've been you know three or four years old, they're rolling, they're good to go. But the ones I built last year just need some more life in them. Okay, so let's talk about rosemary now, because okay. it's right here. So this is rosemary. Oops. Um, this is one of my favorite things to grow because I love the way it smells and I love the way it tastes. But um, this is such like a de-stressing plant. So what I mean by that is I work from home a lot and if I'm stressed out and I can't figure out a coating problem, I will bear hug this thing and it like calms you down. I know I sound crazy, but it legit works, um, especially in the summer because it's so like fragrant and all of that. So. Um, I love rosemary to have around, but we also eat it a lot. So when we typically harvest it, we're just cutting off like a branch like this, harvesting all the leaves off and then chopping them up into little, like I, I, I really like to use uh, rosemary almost like it's powdered. So I'll run it through a ninja or something like that to get it in real small particles and I'll sprinkle it on something. Because rosemary has a pretty intense flavor. And if you get like a whole leaf in your tooth, like it's, it's very in flavorful and it can be overwhelming in the beginning if you don't like the flavor yet necessarily. So I really like to sprinkle this on um, sweet potatoes. You like, you make those, uh, those, those sweet potatoes and carrots, we put it on that too. Yeah. What else do we use rosemary we on? We use it a lot whenever we make a whole chicken in our Instapot, we use rosemary a lot with that. Yeah. It pairs really well with chicken. 
Um, again, like along, along with oregano, this is like one of the best things that you can add to your diet for health. Um, in fact, like rosemary, the has it's used as a, uh, a natural preservative because of the properties that are in it. So a lot of times rosemary is grown just for that. So um, again, incredibly healthy, really good to add to your diet. Another thing you can do is on these harder stems, you can peel all the leaves off and use these uh, on, your, on your barbecue as like a kebab, you know, um, as a skewer. Um, and it has like, it infuses the, the flavor of the rosemary into the meat. So that's a way you can use ros rosemary. This one, I mean, a rosemary, I've, I've mentioned this on the other ones, but this one especially does not like to have a lot of water. So um, it's a Mediterranean plant through and through. It, you've got to be careful with how much water you give it. And I know yes. we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I probably, I did notice it was flowering. Um, it's a natural cycle for it though, so it's going to be okay. Um, once the weather kicks back in, it's gonna it's gonna go right back. So, basil is a different story. Yeah. So basil, once it starts flowering, you need to pinch it off. Yeah. Um, so, well, it stops producing leaves at that point because once it's flowering, it's in like okay, I'm done mode. But basil is an annual, so basil is only growing for a limited time. And it's dying. Rosemary is a perennial, so it comes back year after year. So if it's flowering, it doesn't mean it's done. It just means it wants to spread. It's happy, right? I mean, that's a, that's a good sign for rosemary. Now for basil, it's not a bad sign. It just means it's done, right? And it's ready to put out seed because it's ready for a new round to come. So whenever basil starts to put up seed, the flavor of the leaves changes because the, the plant's doing more work to produce seeds. So it's doing less work to make leaves, uh, you know, doing all that. So uh, the, the flavors change and it's just not as good. So that's why you want to pull it off on basil. Also on basil, the reason why you want to do that is to encourage a bushier plant um, the more that you do that on basil, the more it's going to bush out and, and make more leaves. So you get more leaves out of the plant if you do that. Uh, rosemary also, uh, well, I mentioned the, the smell, the, the, the smell on it. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's talk about cilantro next. This one's heavy. So I love cilantro. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to grow. Um, you can see though, this, is, this plant here is a prime example of why cilantro is hard to grow. It is so finicky. So whenever it gets mad at you, it does this, where it sends up it bolts. So this is going to seed, like we talked about with basil a second ago. So it produces a thick center salt, sends it up in the air, and then it'll produce seeds at the top of this eventually. Once that happens, you're welcome to try these leaves. Try like that leaf and that leaf. And this one will taste awesome, and that one will be like, and that's just kind of how it works when things start bolting. So, um, the thing about cilantro, though, is the seeds are So I, cilantro, I, I, just, I let it do its own thing. I threw like thousands of seeds everywhere a couple of years ago. They've continued to produce. And yeah, they're everywhere we're now, grateful when we have it and when we don't, it's all right, well, it's not ready for cilantro. But in the meantime, because what we do in the summer is we switch to other plants that taste like cilantro. So there's a plant called Vietnamese cilantro or Rao Ram that is from uh, Vietnam and it tastes very similar to cilantro. So you can switch to that, it's a little spicier, but um, it's good, and then they have a Puerto Rican cilantro as well. Uh, it doesn't like the sun though, so it's gotta be like in the shade under a canopy. Um, but those are two different plants you can switch to in the summer whenever it's too hot for cilantro. What do we wanna add about cilantro? Um, I mean, Mexican dishes, of course. We use it a lot in like, whenever we do like a taco salad, things like that. And those seeds Burritos. we use like in the same way, like we just take those, mm -hmm. like when, they first, when the seeds first develop and they're still green. Just throw those in a salad or whatever, and it's like a little crunch. That's really nice. Um, okay, let's go to the plant that looks like cilantro. <laughs> so, this is parsley. So, parsley looks like cilantro, but it grows way different. So, parsley is a, uh, it's not a perennial, it's a biennial, but that means it lasts two years. So, um, it's in the carrot family. So, it actually does produce a little, some, some varieties of parsley will actually produce a little white carrot. So if you ever see that, that's, that's why that is. Um, parsley does fine in the winter here. So we've got a lot of parsley out in the garden. 
Um, we, when we first started using parsley, it was, it's really easy to overdo it and use too much of it and then not want to eat parsley for a little while. So we've done that with rosemary, with parsley, and with sage, where we've ruined it for a few months and then we've kind of come back to it. So um, the key, the, I mean, the number one way we're using parsley is in our couscous recipe. Yeah. You want to, you want to explain what your couscous recipe is? Because it's like my, one of my favorite things you make. Um, well, I mean, couscous is like, I don't even know how to explain what couscous is. It's like a grain, right? Is. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a rice almost. Um, and then we add like a bunch of parsley into it. And then, um, oh gosh, it's been a little bit. Um, pine nuts, raisins. Yeah, pine nuts, raisins, craisins. Yeah, know. it's on our website. If you go on yeah. our website and search for that, you can find it. Or if you look at parsley in the app, it'll be linked in there because there's blog posts and recipes for each plant that link back to our website. So um, that's the main way we're using parsley or for the rabbit. She loves it, it's her favorite thing. So it's a rabbit treat too. Um, <laughs> I put it a lot in our soups also. Yeah. It's really good in there. And it's like a, a chicken noodle soup. It's really good. Yep. Um, do a quick time check. It's 2.30. If you don't have a ticket yet, get a ticket from Patrick. And we are giving away these smart pots in like 15 minutes. So stick around, we'll be doing that. Any questions over these two before so we move on? How much on your app does it make do you, do you guys like have a, somebody that downloads it so you don't get any like viruses or anything that gets in your guys or you're trying to sell them stuff? Oh, well, I mean, we made the app because we wanted to make it easier for people to grow food. So, so we're not going to be inundated with uh, all the codes written by me and Patrick, and we got a friend named Justin who's usually up here too. So there's no, we're not outsourcing any code. Uh, for our day job, we are where we make uh, software for uh, healthcare, so that's what. So we know we're really good at security. That's what I'm trying to say. You don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, I'm autistic and obsessive about all this stuff, so uh, I, I I worry about it at night. So you don't have to. Is what I'm trying to say. Like we got it on lockdown and all this. Um, yeah. So and as far as making money on it, we linked to products at Amazon. Uh, we've lost money the last three years, so we're not we're not out here to make money. We're out here because I wanted to. I have four kids, and I I worry about the world that they're going to grow up in. And instead of like laying a, a night and worrying about it, I thought, well, if more people did this, then I think it'd be a healthier place, and this helped me. So I want to. So that's why we're here doing it. So maybe one day we'll make money from it, but that's not why we're here today. So um, okay, what other? Oh, Cody, yeah. Personal cilantro. cilantro. Cilantro is a good companion for pretty much everything. So the way that literally how most of my cilantro got planted last year was I was having like one of my days at work where I couldn't figure something out. And when I'm having one of those days, I like to go out in the garden and feel productive. So I took like a whole bag of cilantro seeds and threw them in each bed, just like throwing them, knowing that one day I would come back and see cilantro and like in those bad days in the future, be like, aha, that was cool. So that's, my, that's what I did with cilantro. It's that indiscriminate because it's so like fickle that I'm just throwing it everywhere. I want to get as much going as I can, right? And I want it going everywhere and I love cilantro. So it's so nice because I walk around the garden, like I was in the garden the other day and there's cilantro out there now and I'm walking around like, oh, there's cilantro, you know, it's like, <laughs> that day was cool now, you know, like, so it took like a bad day and made a future positive out of it, right? Like, it's my mental hack for all that. So I, do, I did the same thing with Southern Peas one day where we were going on vacation and my garden, I walked out and my garden looked like, looked horrible. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, we're, you know, so while we're leaving for vacation, I take an entire huge bag of beans, throw them everywhere. We come back from vacation because we went on a couple vacation, like in, we come back and it's just the whole garden is overgrown with beans. I was like, well, at least we have food, you know, like, so garden's my therapy, man. You know, you've been out there with me. I mean, that's, that's where I go to, to get away from it all. So, yeah. Um, all right. You want to do chives? Yes. That's we don't have favorite. chives with us, but let's talk about them. them. Um, I, I was tired of carrying stuff. Like okay. It was that was gonna be a long day. <laughs> <It was heavy. laughs> um, so chives. Let's talk about those. So when I first started growing food, I was not really like I did not understand why there were onions and why there were chives. Like what are we doing, right? Here's short in. Here's here's the story. Onions are meant to grow bulbs. Okay. Um, if you cut the greens off, they're not gonna grow bulbs as well. So they're, the bulbs aren't gonna be as large. If uh, chives, on the other hand, do not grow bulbs. All they do is grow tops. And the tops taste sweeter, and they're perennial and come back year after year. And they make these flowers that taste incredible. And she loves eating the yes, flowers. Yes, they, the they make like it. the beautiful purple flowers, and they are so good. And the kids love it because I, I use those in the cooking too, and I'm like, oh, we're eating flowers. <laughs> they love it, they love it. It's great. So again, chives, incredibly easy to grow, come back year after year. 
So, um, and then the ride through with oregano, uh, and then mint. So I guess we'll just jump well, into mint. We use chives in, in everything pretty much. Like we use it in scrambled eggs, in mashed potatoes, and I mean, pretty much you name it, we can put chives on it. It's so good. So. And uh, so um, another really thing, uh, thing that's really easy to grow is mint. So uh, we don't have any mint here with us. We don't eat mint, but we drink a lot of mint. What I mean by that is in the summer when it gets really hot, we just take a bunch of mint leaves and some lemons, put it all in water together and let that infuse. And it makes a really refreshing drink, especially when it's like 100 degrees outside. That's, that cools you down so quickly. Um, there's like six different types of mint that we have in our garden. Again, I'm obsessive about collecting. So. Um, <laughs> I will say mint is extremely aggressive. So have it in a container or it's gonna take over or an smart area. Pot. Yeah, we we have one raised bed where we have like six different types of mint in there and we're just letting them battle it out. So <laughs> it's just craziness in there. Yes. But it's all mint everywhere. It's a fun battle though. Yeah. And the rabbit loves it too. That's for one of yeah. our treats too. Mint is also said to repel mice and spiders. <laughs> take it for what you will. But yeah. The logic there is that the, the strong scent of mint overwhelms their sense of smell because mice have such strong sense of smell that they can't smell anything else, so they don't like it. You know, think of us when you like burn your nose from a sense. Well, like their nose is way stronger than ours, so they do not like being around that. So that's the idea. We haven't seen any mice there, so we yeah. can maybe vouch for yeah. that. They're everywhere else, though. <laughs> By the way, our app makes it easy to manage things like mice. So if you go into the critters tab of the app, it has how we manage mice. Now, hint, we have a lot of cats, and that works really well. But um, and really, like the point behind that is, you know, we're trying to manage pests in our garden organically. So even with like aphids, we're buying ladybugs and we're doing things like that. So we're not spraying chemicals out in our garden because that's one of the reasons why we started growing food to begin with. So we didn't have to have food with chemicals sprayed all over them. So uh, why do that if you're? Um, what's that? Yeah. So um, so like with uh, with aphids, you can buy ladybugs on Amazon and they eat aphids. So and, like one ladybug baby will eat three thousand aphids in their lifetime. So, so there's ways you can handle the, all these pests without having to use any chemicals. So if you, if you download the app, you can go look in the pest list and it shows you a, a picture of each pest and you can tap on it and it tells you, yeah, all natural stuff. We use no chemicals and everything that we have in the app is stuff we use in our garden. So nothing we haven't tested ourselves and obsessively tested ourselves. Uh, time check, okay, 2.33. Got 10 more minutes and we'll do the drawing. So let's talk about time. <laughs> It is time to talk about time, yes. We don't mean to make so many time jokes when we talk about time, but it's like it. <laughs> you have to. Like every sentence you say ends up having the word in it. So time, so everything else we've talked about is pretty strong flavored and you kind of got to ease into it, right? Time is not like that. It is very mild and it's, we use it like salt and pepper basically. So um, it's really easy to grow just like the other ones. It's just, it's one of these Mediterranean herbs. Um, we use it with fish a lot. I'm hearing an echo. Is everyone else hearing like a feedback a little bit? Yeah. Um, turn that down a little bit over there. Um, so. Maybe. I think you're too close to it. Maybe come on over here. I'll there just step over here. Okay. So um, we're using time with fish a lot, especially, um, but really on anything. Um, we keep just a kind of a plate in our kitchen where we keep scraps of oregano and thyme and all that kind of stuff just piled up there. And like I said, when I get stressed out, I go fill it and that's. That's, that's our strategy for, for time. Um, it's really easy too to propagate. You just take a cutting from one of these and then strip the bottom and then dip it in the, the rooting hormone and then stick it in dirt and there you go. So we touched on sage earlier and how great sage pesto is. Um, sage is another one of those plants that just smells incredible. I mean, the flowers from it are just, uh, if you're having a panic attack and you smell sage flowers, it just instantly brings you back down. That's, it's, it's great. Um, I feel like that's the same with a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them are that way, but um, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and give away some smart pots. I think we've covered most of the herbs. Yeah. Any questions about anything else before we uh, give out some stuff? Yes. I would do both. So the question was, if you're going to grow green beans, what would you grow? So I would do a mix of both. So the nice thing about bush beans is you get a bunch of beans at once. So we like to grow rounds of those that we start like every two weeks and then we preserve a lot of those. So we'll eat like some of them fresh and then we'll preserve a couple bags of them. So we have stuff going, but then the pole beans continue producing all year. So it's nice to have both. Um, so not easier than the other No, no, um, they're both really easy to grow. So uh, yeah, 
as far as ease is concerned, they're about the same. Now, I, I think, yeah, yeah, I would say they're both really easy. Bugs can be an issue sometimes with them. Um, water can sometimes be an issue. With, with uh, you got to make sure you stay on top of the watering. They get enough water um, until they start producing, and then they get back off. See, that's one of those things. Like even all, I don't, I still don't remember exactly the watering for beans. I got to go back to the app and look at that for watering. So, um, yeah, but that's why we made it. So I didn't have to go like, okay, which spreadsheet is that in? And we go find use it. it all the time. We'll pull it up in the garden. We're like, okay, now what? what <laughs> yeah. <else? laughs> yeah. There's so many things to remember. Any other questions? All right, let's give out some smart pots. So the first one.